Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, May 5th, 4.50 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market uh, Insight video, the Big Show edition, where we take a look back at the prior week, take a look ahead at what's important for next week, and update the world-famous 21 over 21 leaders list. Let's dive right into it. State of the market, we were teetering with uh, whether or not we were going to have to uh, backtrack from long-term or a uh, large cap uptrend, but a strong day today definitely cemented this as the state of the market. Long cap, uh, <laughs> why do I keep saying long cap? Large cap uptrend, avoid regional banks, although they had a bounce back day today, avoid anything related to commercial real estate also. And the mid and small caps are trying to make a run at their 21 day moving average. So that's definitely some improvement. Let's check over here at the trend gauge. Leadership neutral. I could probably put a sub arrow uh, to positive on that after some of the action yesterday and today out of leaders. Short term, we're neutral, green sub arrow. Three big cap indexes back above their 21, mid and small, trying to get uh, into their 21, ran into the declining 21 today. Let's see if we can. Uh, get some strength next week and get over that hurdle. Mid, uh, medium term, same setup, mid and small below, large cap above the medium term 50 day moving average, long term 200 day moving average, same as uh, mid caps or medium with um, mid and small below, large caps above. So what happened today? Probably the most widely uh, anticipated earnings report uh, as the market was teetering on the edge after some uh, fears of an additional uh, additional weakness, additional liquidity issues uh, in regional banks. But Apple knocked it out of the park with their earnings report, beating on sales, beating on earnings sparking a gap up overnight and a broad rally throughout the day. A little bit of a fade into the close, but that's really uh, picking nits. Just a really good day in the market. 11 out of 11 spider sectors up. Large caps regain their 21-day exponential moving average. Here are the final numbers. RG7 led by ARC. Several of the ARC holdings uh, had gaps. At least four of them had big gaps this week. Uh, the Revere Grow 7 ETF composite up 2.4% on the day. S&P 500 gapped up 9 tenths of a percent. Rallied in the morning based, rallied in the afternoon. Little pullback into the close was up as much as 2.1%. Uh, up 1.85% on the day. NASDAQ 100 up 2.13, Dow up 1.65, mid caps up 2.1, Russell 2000 small caps up 2.4, Global Diversified 6040 stock and bond up 0 0.88, bonds lower across the board today, so rates up a little bit. This drug down the 6040. Uh, Grotection in house up 1.07%. Today, we'll hit the tail of the tape and the updated 21 over 21 list. Let's dive right into it. You all know by now why we uh, do active management here at Revere. It's so that uh, our clients, especially those approaching retirement, never get a big chunk taken out of their nest egg, uh, usually from uh, a high during an uptrend till a break of the 200 day moving average that might indicate a correction is about 10 to 12 percent. It's what happens under that 200 day moving average uh, that really separates a normal pullback or a bear market from a severe bear market. Sometimes you just touch the 20, 200 day, get right back above. Sometimes you just go through it like a knife through butter and keep heading lower the way we did with COVID. In February and March of 2020, last year uh, with the inflation fears was more of a uh, one step up, two steps back scenario, high to low, 27.5%. On the road to recovery now, uh, back above the 200-day moving average, and we have been uh, since March. We got back above it uh, early, early in the year. Uh, mid-January, failed again mid-March, taking another run at it. Uh, 
have some weakness twice over the last two weeks. Each time buyers came in to save things. We held the 50-day moving average. That's the medium-term indicator. Uh, and a nice day today to end the week. And we'll see what next week brings. But uh, in order to break the 200-day, you've got to break the 50-day. Before you break the 50-day, you got to break the 21. We played ping pong around the 21 over the last couple of weeks, but held the 50 firmly above the 200-day. And uh, if you're interested in an active approach like this that participates in market uptrends, gets out of the way in downtrends, send me an email, Donna Asset.com or my partner, Dan Stewart, Dana Asset.com. The phone is 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. So here's the SP 500, two closes below the 21 uh, over the prior two days, but a gap up today and then a follow through up through the 21. Let's take a look at the five minute chart here. Actually, the 10 minute chart shows a little bit better uh, because you can see on here. So here's the gap up run into 4126. Let's draw a line there. Uh, and then we pulled back a false breakdown during this 10 minute period right here at 1250. When you see a false breakdown and then a quick slingshot higher, uh, making a higher high, you can see during this 10 minute period that that happened uh, over the lunch period. And then, so that's basically just anybody saying, well, from the low, if we break below the lows of the morning, I want to, I want to get out of the way. This may be a false rally, uh, but it was instead a false breakdown, uh, false breakdown followed through with strength. We went sideways for a little while and then rallied all afternoon into right at three o'clock. Uh, where we topped at 4147, which is very actually within a couple of points of yesterday's high after the uh, Powell rally. Now, when Powell started, uh, before the notes came out yesterday, not the notes, the statement from the Fed, uh, the S&P was at 4132. Uh, that was on Wednesday. We gave uh, gave all that up into the close Wednesday, uh, further sell off on Thursday, but we kind of didn't proceed past the morning lows around 4050. That was good. Then we had the gap up up to 4126. And then where we where we yesterday's high uh 4148 basically where today's high was uh pulled back still holding that 4132 pivot which was where uh Powell we were when Powell started speaking yesterday. So today definitely a win for the bulls. There's certainly some resistance that we need to get above that 4148 to start then 4186 from earlier in the week, and then uh, this 4195 area from back in February where we peak. So we've put in a pretty nice base, now a handle, uh, shaking out the last of the week holders. Let's see if we can get a uh, blast above 4200 uh, and uh, make new recovery highs. The recovery high for now, 4325 back in August. So we've basically gone nowhere since last August. Uh, but we did have a very harsh sell-off between August and October. A nice rally, pullback, put a base in here at 3,800, marking pretty good support here. And you can see that this was, that corresponded with the shakeout on 313, that 3,800 was a big level. And we've been rallying off of that since. Certainly some choppiness over the last two weeks uh, and definitely some weakness from the uh, overhang from the bank liquidity issues in regional banks. But the Fed appears to be ready to sacrifice some banks for uh, the quote unquote greater good, but we shall see next week. But for now, it was definitely a nice close to the week. Uh, turn up on the stochastic, not through the moving average yet, but uh, definitely a positive close to the week. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100, uh, a little bit healthier than the S&P up near higher highs. You can see the relative strength over the last two weeks after four weeks of relative weakness. Good, re, uh, good earnings from Microsoft, uh, Meta, and now Apple responsible for a lot of that. Certainly today, uh, Apple responsible for quite a bit of it, but uh, closed just below the 21, stayed there for about 30 minutes until Apple reported back above the 21 after hours. Uh, new recent highs on the NASDAQ 100, pretty good stuff. If you look at a weekly chart, uh, this is a nice little made of base and we're just at a higher level going sideways over the last six, seven weeks using the 50 day or the, actually using the 10 week moving average uh, as support. Important to look at the 
at those weekly charts to note that you touch the 10 week very often without touching the 50 day on the daily. I've uh, explained why that happens. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, undercut reclaimed the 50 yesterday in the afternoon, reclaiming the 21 today, that 34,000 level, the next level for it to overcome. Here's mid caps. Uh, this is looking like a uh, an, ab an abandoned baby. The single candle is the uh, abandoned baby. Uh, and um, gapping up and uh, running into all these moving averages at the 450 level. You've got the 50 day, the 21 day, the 8 day, the 200 day all gathered up. There a clear breakout from there. Uh, will be a, a certainly a win for the bulls. You can see how tight we were uh, going back two weeks before the latest banking crisis uh, hit over the last two weeks. We can clear above this uh, 454 level, uh, then 460, which is the recent highs of that consolidation is uh, within the sites of mid caps, small caps. Ran into the declining 21 day moving average. We failed there three times this week, uh, but looks like we might've had a shakeout yesterday with the, with the uh, regional banks and the small caps. We actually didn't undercut the lows from th 324. And now we're, as I said, we're into the declining 21. Note the stochastic hookup from oversold. Uh, so the, the, think of it as the slingshot has been pulled back. Uh, are you ready to let go of the slingshot and send it higher? We'll see what next week brings, but a good example of this setup is on GDX this week. Here is the slingshot being pulled back as GDX came down into the 21. Then you let go of the slingshot, you have the stochastic crossover, and look how quickly you uh, can move up after the slingshot is pulled back with a nice bounce uh, off the 21 over the last three days, pull back but bounced at the ADMA today. Uh, gold on week on lower volume, uh, gold stocks continue uh, to act well. That's an example of the slingshot uh, 21 day stochastic combination uh, long setup. You see it quite a bit, and uh, it's a pretty low risk entry. So we looked at the big five indexes. Let's go to the dollar now. Dollar started off today strong immediately so you can see the dollar fading this corresponded with strength in the indexes also the exact same at the exact opposite of what was going on uh, with precious metal they, they still precious metals they still close negative on the day uh, but you're gonna see uh, the uh, inverse correlation uh, stays intact here so here's the dollar ended up down on the day after starting with a gap up uh, here's GLD big gap down and uh, trended higher in uh, the rest of the day while the dollar was doing the complete opposite. GDX, same thing, gap down uh, strength during the morning while the dollar was pulling back and then sideways into the close. SLV silver, same thing, a little bit of a harsher gap down, but recovered the gap and then went sideways, didn't fill the gap. Uh, but uh, above the gap down open. So a little bit of a positive there for precious metals, ending up a week where they did show uh, relative strength overall for the entire week. Let's go to uh, the VIX now. Talked yesterday about how we had that one close above the 20. That's looking uh, like a, an isolation, 14% pullback today in the VIX, back below the 50 day, back below that 20 level, back below the 21 day moving average. Uh, good setup for the VIX uh, as a tailwind for stocks. Let's flip over to bonds now. Uh, bonds gap down today and then traded in a tight range after that. They had a pretty strong week, so a normal pullback uh, across the board. Bonds were down. This is the broad bond index. Here's TLT. Let's go to the yields on the 10-year. TNX down 2.83%. Snap back after a pretty big drop. Uh, in interest rates throughout the week. Some of that tied to money flowing into the bonds as a fear trade that uh, was alleviated a little bit today. Uh, and then the 30 year uh, up 1.05% on the day. Finally, let's take a look at Bitcoin. Went up 2.69% uh, on the day, bounced at its 50 day moving average, still trading 
uh, in a range. So those are the major indexes that we check with uh, each video that we do. Let's go to the tail of the tape now. We'll hit the highlights, uh, improvement. So the stochastics for the indexes on a daily chart uh, have gone from negative to neutral to positive. Same thing on the RG7. NASI RSI uh, looks like it wants to turn back up. I mean, that, it doesn't officially update until six o'clock on stock, stock charts, but it was coming right down into the oversold area and looks like it's going to pause and turn back up. The dollar continues favorable uh, and um, Yields are uh, yield and bond prices are both uh, stuck in a trading range. So we re-highlighted the bull case with this getting back above the 21 on the big cap indexes. Uh, some news before the open: the payroll report uh, was much stronger than anticipated, and our average hourly earnings were up. However, they did uh, dial back the actual numbers from the prior two months, and initially the dollar spiked, bonds dropped. And we were at 4090 pre market. We dropped to uh, about between 4075 and 4080, but recovered quickly and then just showed strength during the day. So the market may be less concerned about inflation now than it is about uh, how bad the recession's going to be or are we going to have a recession? Uh, and that's what the message to me was the takeaway was from a strong reaction to the NFP report today. Uh, because this is inflationary um, and we got back the ground that we lost Wednesday and Thursday uh, on banking fears and the reaction to the Fed and uh, showing strength in the face of the strong payroll report today was another feather in the bull's cap. Day count, we went from three down to up one. First day back above the 80 EMA and the 21 EMA. Expectations flip from neutral to positive with us regaining the 21. Uh, Let's see what else. As I said, 11 out of 11 sectors up today. The dollar started strong, uh, ended up uh, neutral to weak, closed down slightly. So we'll uh, change that to neutral. Uh, oil strong, retail strong, uh, the banks strong and tech strong today. The only thing's down. Uh, bond prices as the yields uh, gained a little bit today and gold, silver and gold and silver stocks. In-house, we bought DraftKings on the gap up and added quite a bit to SSO. Here are our new holdings, the full portfolio. Bottom line for the day, Apple sparks a gap up in a broad rally. Large cap indexes regain their 21 day moving average. Let's see what next week brings. And for now, we're going to Head to the 21 over 21 list. First, I want to show five stocks punted from last week's list. Elf, looks like it might be time for this to base. This was a leader basically all year, showing relative weakness over the past two weeks. Here's the telltale for me. It gapped down and showed strength by regaining the 21. Uh, this was on the negative reaction to uh, Estee Lauder's earnings on Wednesday. But that strength didn't stay. And today on an up day, it was down on slightly above average volume. This tells me uh, it's time for it to rest. It might have a date with the 50 day moving average. Doesn't mean it's broken in any way, shape or form. But this is uh, not the 50 over 50 index. This is the 21 over 21. So ELF uh, has been on for quite a while uh, exiting this week. The next one to exit, uh, GE Healthcare, another one that was on the index for quite a while, uh, gap down on earnings, couldn't get back above the 21, closed right on the 50 day moving average today. Looks like it needs to form a base. Also, nothing wrong with forming a base around the 50 day moving average. It just means you're you're taking a break and we don't want to tie capital up, up in something that's taking a break when there's things that are breaking out and going higher. Uh, Exxon, this was punted uh, early in the week. Uh, as oils had a terrible week. Minor bounce today off of the 200-day uh, moving average. Value-oriented uh, managers love to buy off the 200-day moving average. You can see last time it pulled back, it was bought here, it was bought here. Uh, so Exxon bouncing and oils had a good day today. Uh, next one was uh, TLT coming off of the list. Uh, and this is this is the uh, long-term bond closing below. We still own a small piece of this via TMF. 
as it's at the bottom of its range, uh, but we're taking it off the 2121 list. Uh, and then finally, IHI. This is a broad uh, medical equipment, medical devices. Didn't have an overly good week, still above the 21, uh, but it's in a tight range here, and there's other stocks that are much stronger that uh, I gave them the spot uh, for this ETF. So let's move on now to what was added this week. And we're going to start off with the new ads. Quite a few strong gaps and several with a day two and day three higher highs. Super micro, certainly one of them. Let's take the stochastics off here. Uh, gap up, big volume, day two higher high, day three higher high, close near the bottom of the range. But uh, if you read through their earnings report, it was extremely impressive. They're not just selling um, super micro. It, it, the, na the name of this company is a little bit misleading. It makes you think that they're more toward uh, supplying PCs, but it's more uh, server type stuff and um, hardware for data centers. And they really upped their guidance for the rest of the year, even though they missed uh, their numbers badly on this quarter, it was the guidance that propelled it higher. Uh, so we added that to the list. Uh, coming back from the dead is Shopify. Uh, had a big gap up, uh, uh, had a good move after a couple of earnings reports ago and broke out, but failed on its last earnings, went sideways, put in a cup and handle, gapped up out of it and a stronger follow through another 8% today. Uh, very clearly clearing this base. And you can see going all the way back uh, to last June, there's no overhead resistance on this. So uh, Shopify looking fantastic. Uh, another one that we started last week talking about, this has really gathered some strength. Uh, Monster Energy broke out, Celsius. Uh, tight week after a big move up here on Monday, total relative strength this week, shaking off the weakness in the overall market. They've got earnings next week. Very curious to see how this one reacts. This one reminds me of Lulu, the way Lulu set up uh, going into earnings, and we put it on the 21 over 21 list the week before. Uh, the uh, 21 coming up through the 200-day moving average uh, next week if it continues its current trajectory. So Celsius was the third ad after that. FAS, this is a play on inverse financials, which we've been long. Uh, as part of a Paris trade, we still have a half of this position left. And really, this is just the complete opposite. We use the XLF chart. And really what we're looking for is something trending below the 21 so that we can take advantage of the inverse of it which should be above the 21 and it is, but we actually use the underlying versus the 21 to make the buy and sell decisions on this. Uh, so FAS, that's inverse financials uh, on the list. And uh, the last one added today was something that gapped up, or no, this is left over from last week, is it? No, it's not, we bought it this week. Uh, on the gap up added to it once, Uber, showing some really nice strength this week. Um, going to be uh, profitable next uh, next year. And a lot of money flowed into this this week. I really like the way it spent three days tight up near the top of this uh, base that it's forming and above the entire range of the gap update. Just real good action from Uber here. And a uh, reminder, if something is flagged over here, that means that we own it. Uh, just be flagged meaning filled in with red. The flag always shows up as we scroll through it, but um, the flag has to be filled in with red. So uh, follow the, all of these are carries over from last week. Intuitive Surgical continues to, this is what gaps up should do in an uptrend. Uh, they pull back, they touch the ADMA and they continue to ride the eight higher and Intuitive Surgical is doing it perfectly. Las Vegas Sands, Bounced off the 21 this week. Microsoft pulled back near the ADMA and made a higher high after its earnings. This looks fantastic. DraftKings, we bought this today. We put it on the list last week. Uh, big volume gap up today. ITB, uh, I could put a ton of home builders on here, but I might as well just keep ITB on it because they all keep acting well and look at the tr tremendous relative strength of the sector. Ferrari gap up day two higher high this week. FedEx just going sideways, really showing relative weakness. 
uh, we might replace this with something growthier uh, next week, but for now, uh, keeping it on the list. Mondelez, tight after its earnings gap up. GDX, uh, slingshot off the 21, pulled back, bounced off the eight today. Lululemon, uh, here's the gap up. As I said, this reminded me of the way that um, uh, that the way uh, Celsius is acting. There, you see the earnings gap up, and it just continues to ride the ADMA higher after the earnings gap. Uh, ONON still holding this. Couple bounces off the 21, making higher highs. Wingstop a uh, little squirrely after its uh, big move up on earnings and a shakeout, and then another shakeout the day after, but riding the ADMA higher. Meta, uh, giving up the lows of the gap update. Microsoft acting much better than Meta is, but it's right there at the eight and it bounced at it today. Uh, Lantheus, it, uh, pull back a little bit after its big earnings gap up yesterday. NVIDIA continues to just hold the 21 very nicely. And finally, General Electric also continues to bounce anytime it gets near the 21 day. And that is your 21 over 21 leaders list. And that is going to wrap up this week's report. So remember, it's not how much you make in the markets. It's how much of that you can keep. As always, we'd like to hear from you. You can email me, Don at RiveraAsset.com, or the phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. So wrapping up the week ending May 5th, this is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Just a straight talk here from Revere. We appreciate uh, your listening and have a great weekend.